everybody, Fantasy Authors Handbook on YouTube. It's Phil again. Welcome. Today, let's talk about how to start writing. Look, endings are hard. Pacing is hard. Believable characters are hard. Dialogue is hard. The whole thing is hard. It's all hard. All Every part of writing, let's just talk about writing a novel today. Every part of writing a novel is hard. It goes from hard part through hard part to the next hard part. Barely made it through that hard part to the very end where the hard part really begins. All through the impossible querying process. All through the impossible publication process. It's all hard. But what the first hard part is getting started writing in the first place. How do you actually just sit down and say, here is word one of... Yikes, 100,000 words. I don't know. Maybe you write outlines. I'm an outliner. There's this, you know, I think longstanding myth, and I said the word myth, and we can talk about this at, at greater length in another video, that there's a distinction between plotters and planners. Plotters being people who write kind of detailed outlines, really figure out what the story is going to be from beginning to end before they actually begin writing the narrative itself. And then pantsers who just sit down to a blank page and just type whatever comes out in whatever, whatever order, and hopefully they get to some coherent thing at the end. I just don't believe that either of these things are necessarily uh, happen. Well, I, okay, I don't believe that pantsing in that classical sense of, I didn't know what I was doing, I just opened my notebook and with a pen just began and I came out with a novel. I don't believe that for a second. Okay, you don't have a big formal, you know, 40 page outline or something that goes chapter by chapter, scene by scene. Not everybody does that. And again, I've worked with a huge number of authors across every stage of their careers. And I've seen every version of an outline you would ever believe, including Outlines that were kind of an email followed by a little bit of a conversation and then go, right? So that would be the sort of pantser thing. You have at least some idea what you're doing if you're a so-called pantser. So does the outline exist only in your head or a very simplified outline that you're not willing to call an outline because it doesn't look like that weird thing you learned in like middle school with the Roman numerals and, and all that nonsense? which I have seen before, by the way, from authors. I don't know, right? But at some point you have started thinking about this novel. What will it be about? Maybe you have an idea for a character. You have an idea for the ending. I've written a ton of stuff based on the ending and just wrote a blog post about ending prompts as opposed to, uh, you know, the, the sort of standard writing prompt, which is here's kind of an idea for a story or even the first line, go from there. For ending prompts, this is the last line, right? And you're meant to sort of write a story to get to there, or try to, whatever. It's an exercise. But so maybe you have the ending, maybe you have an idea for how this starts out, how this character, what you want, you know, just what you want this character to experience, and so on. Whatever that is. That's a place to start, right? I would suggest writing that down when you get those ideas, when, they come, when it comes to you, and save it somewhere. Uh, you know, I have a, actually a pretty good memory, but nobody has a perfect memory. And there might be something to be said that like, hey, if I didn't remember the story idea, it wasn't very good in the first place. Yeah, that's possible. As an aside about ideas, every idea is Schrodinger's cat, right? It's in a box with some poison. And that makes it either a good idea or a bad idea. So essentially simultaneously a good idea and a bad idea until you pull it out of the box and start writing it and see what happens. You, I think if you look at some of the best-selling novels of all time and just try to drill them down to just exactly what this is about, they're pretty simple. They're not necessarily groundbreaking, crazy huge ideas, but it's in the execution of the 50, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120,000 words that makes that idea either worth it or not worth it, right? So you got your idea. What is this going to be, though, right? Because there's going to be more that you need to do maybe before you get started. Is this a giant epic fantasy that you hope will be a series? 
right? Are you going to do that giant world building? That's hard. How much world building is necessary, right? Do you have something meticulously plotted out, this whole like 20 volume meta story for the whole series? Do you have to even do that? Uh, should you in the current publishing universe and publishing landscape? I don't know if that's going to help you, especially if you don't have a track record already to go to an agent and say, okay, this is book one of 20, which means that now that agent has to sell 20 books to a publisher who is going to look at you and say, well, I mean, this looks great and everything. What if the first one doesn't sell and we're now, we've now contracted you for 20? They're just not going to do that, first of all, by the way. Um, so the more, again, this is another bit of advice I keep throwing out there forever and ever. It's a standalone with series potential. If that's in your query letter, I really do believe that in this continuing, like, iffy publishing climate, that's going to be a good thing, right? It means that, hey, if this really kicks off, we can capitalize on it. And it can be the sort of genre which then just generates a book a year forever and ever for Terry Brooks. Um, but if sort of genre came out and nobody cared, then they just wouldn't have been stuck in that contract for those years and years. What's getting in your way from starting? Any one of a million things, right? Uh, you know, I don't know why it's too early in the morning to start writing. It's too late in the day to start writing. It's too close when you, to when you have to leave for work or too soon after getting home from work. Are these reasons not to write or are these excuses not to write? I don't know. Look, when I was at TSR and Wizards of the Coast, we were super crazy deadline driven. A book was put on our publication schedule most of the time before an author was even assigned to it. So we knew exactly when this book had to be done. So we, it was my responsibility as an editor, all the editors had the same responsibility, kind of ride authors and get this stuff done, get that in on time, make that production schedule, make that release date come hell or high water. You're going to find out there in the world of publishing, especially if you're, just, you're not thinking about writing some kind of tie-in stuff, which again is kind of getting more and more rare. This is your this is your book. This is your vision. Take your time, right? So, is it a reason to? Do you have a reason to write? If it's not a burning, like I need to do this. This idea is so great, or you feel so great. Um, if you're just kind of like, nah, listen to that small voice that says, oh, maybe this isn't the idea. Maybe the the reason I'm having trouble getting started is I just don't feel like it's going to be good, right? So what's a good reason not to start writing? I'm driving in a car right now. That's a good reason to not start writing. Put your laptop away, concentrate on the road before you kill yourself and take some innocent victim with you, right? But otherwise, and look, we're all living humans. We're all people in the world. And I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you're not already a, an established franchise author, that this is all you do, this is what you're doing full-time, and maybe you do have those deadlines for the next uh, installment in the giant best-selling thriller series. I get those responsibilities. I have them too, right? And I'm never going to advise anyone to quit their day job and just start writing before you know for sure that you can make a living as a writer and maybe your situation I, I don't know your situation everybody has a slightly different situation do you have some means of support so that you can say you know what i can i can spend six months trying to do something with this um and devote myself full time to that fantastic right but never listen to somebody like me separated by time and space on youtube don't know you, have no idea what your situation is, have no idea where you are in your life, financially, family-wise, all that stuff. Who says, yo, you have to quit your job. It's either a full-time thing or it's nothing. Nonsense. In my entire career, I have worked with maybe four or five full-time novelists. Um, and that's really getting even more rare in this time when 
the amount of money that novelists are making has actually dropped or more or less stayed the same while everything has gotten dramatically more expensive. So it's a really difficult thing to do for a living. He was a little bit nuts, right? But he was also extremely brilliant. Hunter S. Thompson once said that to be able to earn a living as a freelance writer in this country is damned hard. There are very few people who can do that. He was right. Even though he said that a long time ago, nothing about that has changed. So definitely, right? Go to work, right? Take care of your kids. Do the dishes, all that stuff, right? What other hobbies do you have? Go play D&D, for goodness sake, right? Go to the casino and, and lose just enough money to, that you can afford. I don't know, right? Take care of your life, right? So then, that being said, how do I actually start writing a novel? So I got it, right? I've been doing this for a terribly long time. Decades of experience in the publishing business, working directly with authors. And here is the magical answer. Ready? The full wisdom. Download now. Just do it. And I don't know if I'm going to have to pay Nike for that. Probably not. <laughs> they don't necessarily own those three words. Do they? Maybe they do. Just do it. You're, if you're in a safe place, you're not driving your car, you have maybe half an hour, right? You have your computer. Hopefully that's a laptop. You have a notebook. Hopefully that's a cheap notebook. However you write that rough draft, right? And we're not talking about how do you finish a novel? How do you revise a novel? It's how do you just sit down and get words out of your head and onto whatever version of a page? Again, I used to really, you know, kind of poo-poo people who wrote by hand and thought, ah, it's just an affectation and it's dumb and it's, it's just adding a, you know, a step to the process that's unnecessary. But then I tried it. And since then, I've been writing most of the stuff that I write now by hand first and in very, very cheap spiral notebooks. It doesn't have to be, again, you don't have to go, well, I have to buy the perfect exact leather bound, whatever. If that makes you feel better, if that gets words out, knock yourself out. It is definitely not a requirement. In fact, being a writer may be the cheapest entry point into a, a small business that exists in the United States of America. You need very, very little in terms of equipment, right? So however, but however you write, typing, typing, writing, writing, speaking into something, write a recorder or into a, you know, speech to text program, however that works for you. Just start writing already. That's all. When you're in a safe place and you're okay to do it, if you don't do it, now you're making uh, excuses. Now it's sort of, well, but it's kind of cloudy outside and this is a sunny book. Any of those little things that you're putting in your head and you're doing that, see, the little, making a little square in your head. Bust that little square open. Bust that little square open. You do not have to be in your writing temple. You don't have to be in complete silence. you got to train your head to just be able to sit down and start scribbling something. Just start doing anything. Physically, force your hand to make a sentence. Typing. Force holding a recorder. Leaning into a recorder. It doesn't matter. Force yourself to make a sentence. For instance, this is a sentence. The guy saw a monster and was scared. That's a sentence. A fantasy or horror story can start with that sentence. It's not a great sentence. It definitely tells rather than shows. It does, every, does actually a lot of stuff pretty terribly. But who cares? It doesn't matter. This is your rough draft. This is scribbled into a spiral notebook. This is jotted down on a notepaper. This is on your phone, clickety click in notes or something like that. Whatever you're doing. The guy saw a monster and was scared. No one is reading over your shoulder. And if there is someone back there, it's Skull Guy from Baldur's Gate or Star Trek Barbies, get rid of those people. Say, get out of here. I'm writing. I'm writing a sentence. 
this you need to really do by yourself. But write that sentence, right? The guy saw a monster and was scared. Whatever your first sentence is, again, it doesn't have to sing. It doesn't have to conjure the spirit of Shakespeare or Faulkner or Tolkien. It just has to be a sentence. Then force yourself to write another sentence. The monster had big sharp teeth and smelled like rotten eggs. Spectacular. I mean, really, this is a tale for the ages, right? It's just amazing. Or it's total crap. But here's the thing. You can work with crap. This is coming from an editor who has no offense to any of the authors who I adore, who I have worked with. I have worked with crap, <laughs> you know. And many of them have sent it, uh, me a manuscript and said, this is crap. I need help. I'm the guy you come to for that, right? Seriously, this is crap, but it doesn't matter. This is your rough draft. This is you just making something. In her book, which I absolutely recommend and talked about on the blog, I'll put it, I'll lay in a link here for the book Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. In there, she wrote, almost all good writing begins with terrible first efforts. You need to start somewhere. Start by getting something, anything, down on paper. What's at stake, right? In, in terms of, of characters and plot, story in general, I'm a firm believer, I think as most people like me will, will tell you, in stakes. What's at stake? What, what does this character need and what terrible thing will happen if it doesn't come to pass? If they don't get it, they don't prevent it, etc. Right? So what's at stake for you as an author if you don't get those first couple sentences down? Or at least that one terrible beginning sentence, right? Well, here's what's at stake. If you don't start writing right now, you will not have written anything in the next few minutes. Could that be enough? I think it may be, right? That's all the pressure you really need to put under on yourself, which is not much pressure at all. And I, I think most people re respond creatively better when there is no pressure, when there isn't a committee of people saying, God damn it, right. Why haven't you written anything? Oh, that sentence is crap. Turn off that committee in your head. I know I got it, right? Everybody has that the committee of critics in there. Let them know, hey, you know, I'll get to you when I'm ready. This, not, this isn't ready yet. I'm just writing the first couple sentences, the first part of a scene, the first part of a chapter, right? Will this be the great American novel? I don't know. Probably not. What's the great American novel anyway? I think that that's a silly kind of thing that everyone will disagree about. Maybe it will be. I don't know. Will it even get published? No, probably not. Actually, most books don't get published. Will it be a bestseller? Will you find yourself at number two or three on the New York Times or number one on the New York Times bestseller list? Probably not. Most books aren't bestsellers. Um, in fact, most books sell fewer than a thousand copies. 90% of books sell actually fewer than a thousand copies, books published in America in any given year. 90% of them do not make a profit. So this is not an easy business. And putting yourself under that pressure of, well, I'm going to go and sit down and write a Harry Potter level success. I am, or I am going to absolutely be Colleen Hoover. Um, probably not, right? And that's pressure that you're putting on yourself that is of no value to you <laughs> when you're actually writing. Just write it, right? Who knows what it's going to turn out to be? Who knows if it's going to even be something that you get more than a third of the way through and you start to lose the thread and you think, ah, this is just, it's too much like this other book that I was just reading or I feel like I'm kind of copying some movie. Whatever the reason, you may just end up abandoning the thing. So take all of the pressure away. All the pressure of I'm going to be really successful. This book is going to be the big sensation and it's going to change the world. In fact, the sign of a crazy person is when they tell you they're going to change the world. 
this is going to change the world. When somebody says that to you, turn around, smile, right? Don't confront, don't get in trouble. And turn around and get the hell out of there. Anyway, Harlan Ellison, who you know I just adore, used to describe writing as a job of work. And he was right. And that was for him in particular because that was his only job. He quit his day job very, very early on. He also said that after a while I flashed on the simple truth that you can change your life if you make a sudden violent commitment without stopping to rationalize why you shouldn't. So I offer that as the counter argument to my don't quit your day job, you know, live your life, take care of your kids. Or if you're in a position like Harlan Ellison was where he didn't have those responsibilities, he also was doing this at a time where it was a lot easier to live on a lot less money. All that stuff, who knows, right? It's 2023. I think he said that in like 1970. But that aside, you make that decision for yourself. But in any case, he, when he said it's a job of work, I think what he meant was don't overthink it. Don't give yourself this impossible goal to achieve, right? The great American novel, the bestseller. Oh my God, like what, right? I, this is the, the next fantasy series that they're going to build a theme park based on. It's like, you know, you don't know that. Come on now, right? All you're doing by, you can, I love visualizing stuff like that. And I would always say like, sure, man. I mean, like to, if it pumps you up for sure, visualize the sort of do in your head, the interview on whatever, you know, TV show that actually covers books. I'm not sure that there are any anymore, whatever. And just sort of imagine, yeah, I didn't really expect this to be the great bestseller it was, but you know, this guy, Phil on YouTube said, I should just start writing. And so I just started writing. And in the end, I got this amazing thing that everybody adores, right? The, I guess we're all going for that. I mean, I don't want to write a novel and go like, well, that was just pointless. And I'm just going to rip that up and throw that away. But what the hell I did sit down and just write that first sentence. Hopefully it will be this great success. And I want to see that go out into the world. And, and I would love for somebody in the future to say, well, you know what? I did write this massive bestseller because I saw this YouTube video where this dude said, just sit down and write any sentence, then write any other sentence and keep writing sentences until you have something in the end. But again, what I think what Harlan Ellison was saying when he said, when he described writing as a job of work, is he was saying basically something like, it's not an easy job writing, but then, you know, what is, right? Any job worth doing that isn't some kind of, I don't know, whatever assembly line work that a, a robot probably really should be doing instead of a person. Um, you know, but have you ever heard of a plumber who only works when he's in the mood or when he's inspired to plumb? or only late at night when the kids are all asleep, or he only plums when <laughs> early in the morning at four o'clock for exactly 45 minutes, like Ray Bradbury, the plumber, you know, crazy, right? Plumbers plumb, writers write, write some stuff. Hunter S. Thompson, again, he was nuts, but also smart. I never sit down and put on my white shirt and bow tie and black business coat and think, well, now's the time to write. I will simply get into it. Okay, everybody, how do you start writing a novel? A series of novels, a short story, a poem, a play, a screenplay, whatever it is. Start now by just sitting down and writing something. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Comments down here, am I crazy again? Tell me, no, no, you ha I have to have a writing temple set up. It, I, they, I definitely have tried and I can only write at nighttime. I don't know you, I don't know your journey. <laughs> so yeah, it, do, what I'm saying is do what works for you, right? But let's hear it in the comments. Definitely subscribe, definitely like, and definitely come back for more Fantasy Authors Handbook on YouTube. Thanks everybody, and I will see you soon.